Okay, so the next part of the U.S. customary system is our weight. And you're like, no, don't talk about weight. <laughs> don't worry, we're going to do weight in different things other than our own weight. <laughs> so weight is just um, a measurement to describe the heaviness or lightness of an object or person. So weight is measured in ounces, pounds, and tons. The ounce is the smallest unit, and a pound is the larger unit, and a ton is the largest unit. So some examples are a quarter pound hamburger at a fast food restaurant, a stack of 11 pennies weighs an ounce, and a whale weighs about 200 tons, 200 tons, not two tons, 200. <laughs> So let's look at some unit equivalents for weight. We know that one pound is 16 ounces and 2,000 pounds is one ton. And we certainly could find the number of ounces in one ton by doing some conversions, right? So let's look at a few examples. So if I wanted to go rewrite 72 ounces to pounds, let's follow the same process. So now ounces, is equal to OZ as the abbreviation. Now, I don't know why it's OZ, but I'm pretty sure it's because something else was taken, and so that's the abbreviation. So 72 ounces, throw it over one like we're used to, and let's multiply by a conversion factor. So I do need to go from ounces to pounds, so this means pounds has to be in the numerator. Another way to see it is going from light to heavy, which means that we're going to be using these conversion factors in the second column that have to go to pounds to ounces. So we'll have one pound per 16 ounces. And then we can see that pounds gets even stranger with the abbreviation of LBS. And then a pound is just LB. So LBS is pounds, LB is one pound. So notice I put, just put LB there. Why LB? I have no idea, but don't put P because that's taken from something else. So P is already taken. So you have, if you're gonna use pounds, you gotta use LB or LBS. Okay, and then now we can totally see that ounces is re can reduce out and we're left with 72 times 1, which is 72, divided by 1 times 16, which is 16 pounds. Okay, and then this is just equal to, if we just put it in the calculator, Once again, we're given whole numbers, so we just can round to one decimal place, four and a half pounds, LBS. Okay, so next, part B says, let's, um, let's go ahead and convert 6,500 pounds to tons. So I do know that if I'm going to tons, I need this in the numerator. So I automatically see tons with in the numerator. I know I'm going to use that one in that second column. Or I could look at it as I'm going from, once again, light to heavy. And know that I'm going to go light to heavy, use this column, and use the one with tons and pounds in it. It's just up to you and the process of how you'll remember to do this. So again, the process is start with what's given to you, 6,500 pounds, throw it over one to be consistent, and let's multiply by a conversion factor. So the conversion factor would have been one ton over 2,000 pounds, LBS. We can see that the, L, the pounds reduce out, and I'm left with 6,500 tons times 1, which is 6,500, divided by 1 times 2,000, which is just 2,000, and then pounds. And then if I just reduce that a little more, or we can put it in the calculator. Again, with measurement, again, we never really use the fractions because in real life, we don't say like 3 and 1 fourth or 13 fourths tons. 
So we could just put this in the calculator really quickly and see that we get 3.25 tons. And we want to keep it as a decimal, not as a fraction, because that's the way we speak, right? We conversate. We don't say 13 fourths tons, right? That doesn't make sense. We say no, 3.25 tons. Now, um, because they gave us whole numbers, we can still round to the nearest tens place. So the five will make this 3.3 tons. Okay. The last one is going from tons to ounces. So I notice that I am going from light uh, heavy to light, um, but I also can notice that I need ounces in the numerator because I need ounces and know that I'm going to be using this column. Or notice it's heavy to light and know I'm going to use that first column. I don't have any unit equivalents from tons to ounces, but I do have ounces to pounds and pounds to tons. So let's go ahead and use that one. So first let's write 115 tons. Let's put it over 1 to be consistent. And let's multiply. Now, because I don't have only one unit convert, um, conversion factor for this example, I have to use two, right? I have to use the one that says 16 um, ounces per 1 pound times 2,000 pounds per one ton. Now, I just want you to note that there is no abbreviation for ton. It's just T-O-N, and I think that's just because it's just like pounds. It's three characters, so we just didn't do a abbreviation for that. So we can see what units we reduce out. We can see that we reduce out pounds, and we reduce out tons. As long as there's one in the numerator and one in the denominator, we can reduce them out. Notice the only units left are the units that we needed, ounces, which is exactly what we wanted. So this is going to be a 115 times 16 times 2,000, all divided by 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. When we don't even need to really write that there, it would be up to you. So let's go ahead and multiply. We have 2,000 times 115 times 16. And that's going to be 3,680,000 ounces. OK. So let's try an application. So now we're going to go to the post office, and it charges 44 cents to mail an item that weighs an ounce or less. The charge for each additional ounce or fraction of an ounce is 17 cents. At this rate, how much will it cost to mail a package that weighs two pounds, three ounces? So this one is always challenging for students. And the reason why is because we need to be able to understand how we mail things. I mean, especially now in our climate, like we've been using the post office for everything, either through FedEx or UPS, right, or going straight to the post office, but some sort of mailing and how to account for the cost. Well, it's nice because the first ounce, no matter what, is 44 cents. So even if it's half an ounce or a quarter of an ounce, it's still going to cost you 44 cents. So that price is fixed. The other price is anything that exceeds an ounce is going to be 17 cents. So even if it's in half an ounce more, it's still going to cost you 17 cents. So we're always just going to be doing one, one unit at a time. If a package is two pounds and three ounces, I know that first ounce is going to be 44 cents. So then the two pounds and the two ounces left are going to be the 17 cents. So again, we're not going to use algebra, okay? So I want to encourage you to do it the way you would be doing it sitting in the post office, like having fun calculating this, right? 
So the first thing we want to do is we don't really have a price for the pounds, right? So we only have the price for the ounces. So let's convert the pounds to ounces first and then make everything ounces and then we can subtract the one ounce and then, you know, multiply and things like that. So the first thing we'll want to do is let's go ahead and convert to ounces. So I have two pounds, right? And then I need to convert that to ounces. But I do know that um, there are 16 ounces per pound. And so we can see that the pounds reduce out and I'm left with two times 16, which is 32 divided by one times one, which is one, so 32 ounces. So the second part would be, go ahead now and find the package total ounces. So it'll be the two pounds, which is 32 ounces, right? The two pounds is now 32 ounces. Plus, the extra three ounces. So the package's total weight in ounces is going to be 35 ounces. Okay, so that's like all the preliminary work. Now let's go ahead and find the cost. Our goal, remember, is always to find the cost of this package. So now the third part will be um, find the cost. Okay, so I do know that one ounce is 44 cents. That first ounce is 44 cents. So this means now that there is going to be 35 minus one ounce equals 34 ounces at the 17 cents per ounce rate. Okay? So if the first ounce is 44 cents, that's going to be one piece. And then every ounce after will be 17 cents. So 35 ounces is not 44 cents each, right? And 35 ounces is not 17 cents each. It's going to be one, the first ounce will be 44 cents and then 34 ounces will be at the 17 cents per ounce rate. So now, uh, let me, the second part would be now find the cost of the rest of the package. So we're going to have 34 ounces times the 17 cents per ounce rate. Okay, and so then we could see ounces reduce out and we're just left with 34 times 0.17. And that'll give us the cost that we need. So let's go to the calculator and calculate 34 times 0.17. So these are the remaining ounces with the 17 cent rate. So that's $5.78. So the total cost of the package is now going to be equal to 44 cents for that first package plus $5.78 for the rest, I mean for the first ounce and then $5.78 for the other 34 ounces. So let's go ahead and add to this number 44 cents. And then we get $6.22. So the cost to mail the package that's two pounds and three ounces is $6.22. So again, this is, uh, this is like a real application. This is how we count how much we pay to mail a package. Like for me, I like to send um, school pictures of my sons with the Christmas cards. And sometimes grandparents especially fight over the pictures. So I always put double for grandparents. 
However, this puts my Christmas card over that ounce. I think right now, this is an older problem, but an, uh, an ounce is now 55 cents or something. And so I, I, always, I actually do this when I'm there at the weighing machine in the post office. I'm like, okay, it's 55 cents. How much does this weigh? And I notice that it's over the ounce. It's usually like 1.2 ounces because of the pictures I put in, the school pictures of my sons. So I just put another stamp on it. It doesn't cost the one ounce of that one stamp. I have to put two stamps. And so this is something like I really like because it's an applied that you can take with you. I didn't use any algebra, right? All I did was figure out how many. I know when I do the Christmas cards, I'm going to put a stamp on no matter what. It's if I need to add another stamp, right? It's if I need to, if I go over this first ounce, I'm going to pay 17 cents more. So here I need to go ahead and look at, okay, no matter what, I take away that first ounce that's 44 cents and I'm going to pay 17 cents per ounce for the rest of the 34 ounces. Okay.